about titanium in real giants Airbus, Dreamliner, and Ukrainian Rhea. Why is this metal used in the largest modern aircraft? What makes titanium alloys superior to aluminum and steel in the air and speed? And what contribution did the legendary Ukrainian designers from the Antonov Design Bureau make to the advancement of aviation, particularly in the context of titanium utilization? I, Marherita Rivchichenko, will share with you these insights and show you the most important things. Let's get started. But before that, remember to subscribe to our channel, there are many interesting topics to explore ahead. Civil aviation is without a doubt, heavily reliant on titanium. This metal began to take off literally and figuratively, became popular among aircraft designers during the 1950s and has since witnessed a steady surge in demand. One of the pioneers in recognizing its potential was the English pilot Peter Twiss, who achieved a remarkable speed record in 1956 by propelling his Ferry Delta II aircraft to an astonishing 1,822 km per hour. Your vector is good. Roger control, and now Angel's 17, steering 225. The aircraft's engines had even more potential for speed but the aluminum covering couldn't handle the heat generated at such a speed risking a catastrophic failure. Then, in an experimental breakthrough, aluminum was replaced with lightweight yet remarkably stronger titanium sheets, and it revealed that titanium was indeed the future of aviation materials. Today, titanium is used to make chassis struts, spars, air intakes, beams, heat shields, and much more. More than 30% of the weight of modern gas turbine engines is made of titanium alloys, blades, drums, rotors, compressor and fan housings and discs are all titanium. The key to titanium's success lies in its exceptional strength while maintaining a significantly lower weight when compared to steel. Titanium alloy demonstrates excellent corrosion resistance, it is not only lighter and stronger, but also more durable. It has long proved to be better than its competitors in conditions of both low and ultra-high temperatures, at any speed. These advantages enable titanium to effectively replace steel and even aluminum. Titanium is six times stronger than aluminum. Replacing aluminum and steel in passenger aircraft with titanium results in a weight reduction of at least 15% and in certain aircraft, this reduction can be as high as 40%. Although titanium comes at a higher cost, the investment proves to be economically viable in a relatively short period. The Americans, for example, recognized the advantages of titanium and conducted extensive testing and implementation of this material in their Douglas aircraft. Initially, they had only a few elements made of titanium, the number could be counted on the fingers of one hand, for example, fire partitions. But in the newer Douglas models, there are already more than 1,000 different parts made of titanium and its alloys. Next, let's consider the American Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet, which stands as the world's first wide-body long-haul aircraft. Its weight was reduced by almost 2,000 kilograms after replacing some steel parts with titanium ones. The first flight of the 747 took place in 1969. And after that, for 35 years, it was the largest and most spacious passenger airplane until the European Airbus A380 appeared. This two-deck giant first took to the skies in 2005. And just imagine, the Airbus A380 already had 82 metric tons of titanium alloy. Approximately 9% of its total weight is made up of titanium, which has proven to be indispensable in crucial components like the landing gear, beams, and engine parts, as European aircraft designers discovered through years of testing. American aircraft designers also came to the same conclusion, which was optimistic for titanium. 
After the 747, one of the first civilian titanium aircraft, there were 57, 67, and finally, in December 2009, the incredible Dreamliner 787, a dream plane, made its first flight. Its design has even more titanium even compared to the Airbus 15%. There is even more titanium in the Dreamliners than steel, of which there is only 10%. I think that after such compelling facts and examples of the best and largest passenger aircraft of our time, there is no need to say anything else about the advantages of titanium in the sky. But it's time to tell you about the role of Ukrainians in the use and popularization of this metal in aircraft construction. After all, we pioneered this field. The N-22 Anti, created in Kiev at the Antonov Design Bureau in 1965 and setting more than 40 world records. From the very beginning, that is, 55 years ago, titanium was used in these aircraft. This ultra-strong and lightweight metal was used to make a corrugated cargo floor that allowed the loading literally all types of equipment. This design solution was surprisingly successful, and our engineers recognized the incredible prospects of titanium. That is why, in 1975, Antonov's Design Bureau created a special group for structural strength of materials. Its members studied and compared the strength and other qualities of aluminum, steel, and, most importantly for us, titanium alloys. This research was spearheaded by the Soviet Union's first female aircraft designer, Elizaveta Shakatuni, who was also the wife of the legendary Oleg Antonov. She initiated the creation of new materials. She set up a group of specialists in her strength of metals division to develop these materials. Highlighting the important contributions made by this pioneering team in the field of aviation materials and design, Shakatuni is widely believed to have given Antonov aircraft reliable wings and a strong structure. Thanks to her and other researchers from the Antonov Design Bureau, VT-22 and VT-6 titanium alloys were widely used in aviation, particularly in aircraft power parts and landing gear. Finally, the N-124 Ruslan and N-225 Maria took to the skies and became legends they are actually descendants of the very first N-22 Anti, which had a titanium floor. Speaking of our Ruslana and Maria, here's an interesting and revealing fact. According to the veteran employees of the Antonov Design Bureau, the American developers of the Dreamliner borrowed some Ukrainian design solutions. In particular, we are talking about monolithic mill parts instead of riveted parts, as well as the widespread use of titanium alloys, the same ones that Antonov Design Bureau began using 35 to 40 years ago. And even the American name, Dreamliner, appeared much later than the name Rhea, which was invented for the Ukrainian N-225 by Petro Balabiv, a hero of Ukraine. And what is also interesting is that our N-225 was secretly created not for the transportation of bulky cargo, but for space programs. Here I come to an extremely interesting topic that will further reveal the uniqueness of titanium and its alloys. Space. In the extreme conditions of ultra-high and ultra-low temperatures, vacuum, and severe corrosion, it is titanium components that provide humanity with the assurance that missions can proceed smoothly and successfully. But this is another space story, which I will be happy to tell you about in our next episodes. Not to miss the interesting things, subscribe to the Ukrainian Titanium Industry Association channel, click on the bell, like and comment. See you soon!